Okay, we will go ahead and get started. Thanks for coming today. My name is Dee Dee Baldwin. I'm the history librarian here at MSU. Um, if you have any questions at any time during the workshop, you can put it in the chat and I'll, I'll see it while I'm talking. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first part of the workshop is going to be just a quick introduction to what Zotero is. And then we will move on to the browser and I'll show you Zotero's website, how to download the program, and then we'll look at how the browser extension works. Then we will go into the Zotero program and I'll show you how it saves your articles um, and how you can create folders and set up groups and all that kind of thing in the program. And then last of all, we will go into Microsoft Word and I'll show you how it works to create citations and um, the really magic part, which is um, where Zotero makes your bibliography for you. And if all that sounds like a lot, it's really not um, because Zotero is extremely easy. So this workshop usually only takes about 30 minutes. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, what is Zotero? Zotero is a citation management tool. These are programs that um, they save your references for you and then they help you create citations. And you might have heard of other ones like Mendeley and EndNote. Um, some of them you have to pay for, some of them you don't, like Zotero. So Zotero does save articles for you and helps you organize them. It can also save websites, it can save things from social media, all kinds of different things. And then it helps you cite your sources and it creates your bibliography in Microsoft Word and then it also works in Google Docs which is really cool if you're working on a group project in Google all of you can use Zotero in your Google Doc. <clears throat> so Zotero is free as long as your article library is under 300 megs. If you do need more than that um, they have subscription options that are pretty reasonable um, Last time I looked, if I remember correctly, it was only about $20 for a, a whole year. So it's, it's, it's very reasonable if you do need more than 300 megs. But as long as you're not doing just a humongous project or you never clean out your articles between projects, you shouldn't have any problem staying under the 300 megs. You are going to want to create a login on Zotero.org. And we'll look, in that, look at that in just a second when we go to the browser. Um, the reason you want to do that is because it will sync your library if you use multiple devices. So you have your desktop, your tablet, your laptop, whatever. It'll sync everything up for you. And then um, you can also create shared libraries. So if you're working on a group project, everyone in your group can access your articles. And that's really useful as well. So to get Zotero, you're going to want to go to Zotero.org and it is a two-part download. There's the program itself and this is um, the program you open up to organize your articles and it's also the part that installs into Microsoft Word. And then you're also going to need the browser extension. This is the part that lets you save the articles that you're looking at. So I'm going to close this PowerPoint and open up my browser. So just give me one second to do the switcheroo. So in a second, you should see popping up on your screen the Zotero website. Um, this is where you go to download. It's just this big red button here in the middle. And this is where it takes you when you click it. It should automatically sense your operating system, so it, it automatically can tell that I'm using Windows, so that's the download it's going to offer me. If it messes up for some reason and you need to change it, they have these other links here that you can switch to. Same thing with the browser extension. It should automatically sense your browser, but if it doesn't, you can click this link to see um, the Zotero plugins for other browsers. Um, I don't believe Zotero works on Microsoft Edge, but I don't think many people use that anyway. Um, as long as you use Chrome or Firefox or um, Safari, you should be good to go. So looking on their website, to, in order to create a login, you can click this link here at the top or register. 
If you go back to the main page, it's just one login link, but if you click it, um, it has an option here to register for a free account. And again, you're going to want to do that so that you can sync your devices, or if you think one day you might want to set up a group. Um, if you have any technical issues with Zotero, I also want to point out their forums. Their forums are really active. You can see um, two minutes ago, three minutes ago, six minutes ago. This isn't like an old internet forum that you know you post on and nobody ever answers you. You will get an answer here and these people know what they're doing and they're really nice about helping you. So if you run into some kind of error, um, just come over here and post on the forum and somebody can help you. All right, so let's look at how the browser extension works. I'm going to go to the library's website, and I'm just going to go to a database. And let's just do a search. I'll do a search for vaccines. So when you're looking at a search result list, your Zotero icon, which is right up here in the right hand corner, um, right now it's showing us a little, there it goes, it switched to a folder. Um, if you're looking at multiple results, like you're looking at multiple article results in a, in a database, it's going to change to a little folder icon and that's because you're seeing multiple possible things to save. So if you click on this and make sure you have the Zotero program open when you do it, if you don't, it'll give you a reminder, so it's not like you're going to try to save stuff and then it won't work or anything like that. It will remind you, hey, you need to open Zotero before you can save this stuff. So you can pick which ones you want to save, or you can click Select All. So if you're in a hurry and you just want to read all of these later, you can do that. Um, be aware that it only saves what's on this page, so it's not going to save all 177,000 <laughs> of these search results. Um, it's only going to save what's showing on this one page. So if you are trying to save all of the article results you get in a search, you are going to have to go to every page of those search results and save each page like this. So I'm going to click OK and it'll give me this little screen that tells me it's saving them. And I always recommend after it does that to open your Zotero program just to make sure it's saved and Y'all can't see it, but I'm checking it now and they did save. Sometimes there's some kind of glitch and it shows that they saved, but they didn't. So I always recommend just checking, open, like popping over to Zotero real quick just to make sure they saved. All right, so if you're looking at a single article, let's go to page two. And let's say we also want this one. If you're looking at a single item, like one web page or one article, you can see that that Zotero icon up here in the top right, it changed back to the little icon that looks like a piece of paper or a file. And I'm going to click that and it's going to save just this one article to my library. So that is how you use the browser extension. It's very easy. You just click the button and then open Zotero to make sure the stuff's saved. Does anybody have any questions so far before we go to the Zotero program itself? Questions about the download or um, or how to save articles? If you do have a question at any time, just um, put it in the chat. All right, so now I'm going to switch over to the Zotero program. There's a lot of switching around in this workshop because I have to switch between a lot of different programs to show everything. All right, so you should be seeing my Zotero screen now. This is what it looks like once you have saved articles into your Zotero library. All right, so when you see these little blue dots here down the side, that means that Zotero downloaded the full text of the article. Um, if it doesn't have a blue dot yet, sometimes it could be that the article is still downloading. Sometimes um, they don't download instantly, depending on how big the article is. And sometimes it might be because we don't have access to the full text of that article and you have to do an interlibrary loan. Um, but in, the, in this case, it downloaded just about every article. 
And when an article does have a blue dot like that, you can right click it and choose view PDF. And then you can open the article from right here in Zotero. And saving these articles, that's what takes up your space. Remember how we talked about you can use Zotero for free up to 300 megabytes. This is what takes up space is saving all these articles. But like I said, unless you're just saving hundreds and hundreds of articles and you just have huge projects, you shouldn't have to worry about the space limit. All right. So over here on the right, this is where it shows the information about each article, what we call in library land, we call it the metadata. It shows you the volume number, the date, you know, just all the information about it. You can edit these however you want. You can just click on whatever field you need to change and then you can edit it. And sometimes people wonder why they might need to do that. And one of the best examples is capital letters. And I'll explain. Um, it doesn't look like any of these articles did it, but a lot of times in databases, for whatever reason, articles, some article titles will be in all capital letters. Sometimes the author's name will be in all capital letters. It's just a weird little quirk that some databases do. And that's something that you have to fix manually because Zotero can't tell what letters are supposed to be capitalized and what letters aren't. And so if you have something in your bibliography where the title is in all capital letters, that's an incorrect citation. So that is something that you will have to fix yourself. Another example, if you look at this article, um, only the first letter of this, of this article title is capitalized. If you were using APA citation format, that would be fine because APA doesn't capitalize every word in an article title. But other citation styles require you to capitalize all these, all these words, most of these words. So that's something you will have to click on the title and fix manually. So you would have to go through and do this. And so on. So again, capital letters are something that you have to fix manually. And you can do that in Zotero, like I just showed you here, or you can fix it in Microsoft Word. People have different preferences for how, for how and when they want to fix those. Um, I prefer to fix them in Zotero so that when Word creates my bibliography, everything is all, it all looks the way it should. And some people like to fix it in Word because they like to fix it while they're looking at it, if that makes sense. So it's just whatever you prefer. Just be aware that um, Zotero cannot fix capital letters in your citations. That's very important to remember. So other things that you can change over here, you can add notes to articles. You can also add tags. Um, most of the time when you download an article from a database, it automatically downloads tags. But for some reason, this is I've never seen this before, for some reason, it did not uh, download tags for any of these. Um, but you can create your own, or you can use the, um, the ones that come over from the database. OK, so to organize your library, you're going to come over here to the left side. And you can click this little folder here for new collection. You can name it whatever you want. So let's just say I'm working on a, a biology paper. I could type that and then go back to my library here and then whatever articles I want to put in this folder I can just drag them over and you can also hold down the control button and select multiple articles and then if you want you can move those into your biology paper folder so there's what it looks like when you move articles into it you can make as many folders as you want you can also make subfolders. So I could right click where it says biology paper and I can say new subcollection. So if for some reason you want to divide the articles even further, you can organize this however you want. If you want to create a group library, you're going to click this orange folder and you're going to say new group. And when you do that, it takes you to the Zotero website. I'm not going to do it on here because I'm not sharing my browser so y'all won't be able to see it but when you when you click new group it does take you to the Zotero website and that's where you set that up you invite people by their email address 
So once they are in their Zotero program and they're logged in, if you have a group library, it's going to appear right in this area right here. Sometimes it takes a second to pop up. Sometimes it could take several minutes even. Um, sometimes it helps to close Zotero and open it back up. But if they'll just be patient, it will pop up. Sometimes it just takes a while. So if you want to sync your account, if you want to log into Zotero, you can come up here to Edit Preferences and click this button right here that says Sync. And this is where you log in. Um, and you're going to want to do that on any device you use Zotero on, just to make sure you keep everything synced up. Another option here is under Site. You can choose a citation style here. Um, I would only do this if you always use the same citation style for every single paper you write. You don't need to do this because when you start your paper in Microsoft Word, when you open up Zotero in Word, it's going to ask you what citation style you want to use, and you can just pick it then. Um, so like I said, unless you just always, always, always use the same style, I would just skip this. You don't have to do this. The main thing under preferences is just, you know, your general things like you have on every program and then um, your sync. Those are the main things you need to know about. So does anybody have a question about the Zotero program itself? Everybody good so far? Okay, let me stop sharing this and we will switch over to Microsoft Word. All right, so once you have Zotero installed on your computer, if you go into Microsoft Word, you should see right here that Zotero has been added to your options up here in your menu. If it's not there, it probably means that just something, there was some kind of glitch in your installation. If you're, install, if you're installing Zotero on Windows, it almost always just works and you don't have to do anything else. If you're installing Zotero on an Apple computer, there are one or two extra steps that you have to take to make Zotero work in Microsoft Word. And if you will just do a Google search for um, something like Apple, Zotero, Wo Microsoft Word, it'll be one of the first few results. Any combination of those words. It's a very common Google search to find the extra steps to make Zotero work in Microsoft Word. And if you're wondering, if you're running a Windows machine, if you will just Google um, Zotero Word plugin not working, something like that. It'll show you some one or two common issues that can cause that. One of them is that you need to um, enable something within Zotero to work in Microsoft Word. Sometimes it's something you need to fix in Word. But like I said, that hardly ever happens on Windows machines. It all, almost always just installs the way it's supposed to. But if you do run into some kind of issue, just Google it and you'll find a pretty easy answer for it. And if for some really, really, really strange reason none of the easy answers work, um, you can use those Zotero forums that I showed you earlier in the workshop and somebody there can help you figure out why it's not working on your machine. Okay, so let's just say I'm writing my paper and I'm going to put in a citation. I'm going to click on Zotero. And you can see very easy, it's just a few buttons. I'm going to click Add Edit Citation. And I will get this little pop-up box. And this is what I was talking about. It's going to ask you what citation style you want to use. So I'm just going to say APA, and I'm going to click OK. And then you should see this little red box pop up. Could y'all see this little red rectangle? If somebody can just say in chat if they can see it. Sometimes yeah. I, okay, thank you. Sometimes I teach this workshop and for some reason WebEx doesn't show, <clears throat> excuse me, um, WebEx doesn't show this part. I don't know why. Okay, so I'm just going to start typing. You can search um, your Zotero library by title or author. 
and then you select which article you're citing. So let's just say I'm citing this article from the New Scientist and it creates that citation. Um, if you're using a citation style that requires page numbers, you will have to do those manually, again, because Zotero has no idea what page you're on. So I'm going to put page 21, and it automatically edits your citation for you. And if there is something else you need to change, you can do that too. When you're done, you hit enter, and it inserts that citation. So I'm going to add a few more. Okay, so let's say you're done with your paper and you're ready to do your bibliography. All you have to do is click on Zotero and you just click this button that says add edit bibliography and it generates it like magic. Um, if you go back and edit your paper and you add more citations, it will automatically update your bibliography. So I'm going to add another one here. And you can see it automatically updated my bibliography. It also automatically alphabetizes it. So even though I added Arnold there at the end, it updated my bibliography by sticking Arnold right there. Um, and you can also edit these. So remember I was talking about the capital letters. If this was something that I had not fixed already in Zotero, you can come in and fix it here. And like I said, some people prefer to fix their capital letters in Zotero, and some people prefer to fix them in Word. Just however you prefer to do it. Do we have any questions? It, it, I mean, it really is that easy. Um, if you need to change your citation style, you can also do that. You can come up to Document Preferences right here, and you can switch the citation. So let's just say you decide you want to do MLA instead of APA. You click OK, and it switches, uh, it switches your in-text citations and your bibliography into MLA. Um, if you do that, that citation switch more than a couple of times, Zotero starts getting confused, and it sort of messes up. So if you do need to switch your citation style, try to only do it once at most. Uh, but yeah, you can do that. They also have an option if you, again, I'm clicking on document preferences here. Um, if they don't have a citation style you need, you can click this link that says manage styles and it'll take you to a website where you can download more and they have a ton because you know how a lot of journals have their own specific citation style that only they use. Zotero has most of those so if you're writing for the the journal of our own citation style and you need that style you can go on the website and download it for that particular journal which is also really handy. Anybody have any questions? Okay, so um, Zotero is really easy to use. I hope you've seen that. Um, and creating that bibliography for you to me is like magic. It's wonderful. Um, and don't forget that you can also use it in Google Docs. That has proved really handy for me in the past. Um, if you would like to evaluate this workshop, I'm pasting a link in the chat box. You don't have to do that, but we just appreciate it if you do. And if nobody has any questions, that is the end of this workshop.